and uh, we should be live usually in this uh, when i start stream we have this weird starting point when we are not sure are we live uh, or okay not. yeah yeah but yeah, uh, yeah. i think we are okay now yeah mm -hmm. hopefully fingers crossed oh i think we are live yeah yeah definitely we are live hooray so hello greetings to everyone and especially for one from youtube because we don't have currently anyone on stream following us but soon hope will be more people so today i have talked with uh, rob from uh, uh, sky machine studios and we'll try to talk mostly about uh, their winter amber game and more uh, first, I want to, to say just that Cold Age is now on early access, so you can uh, try it, reach it. We always have demo to play if you want to try before buy, but I call you all to to try it. So, hello, Rob. Uh, hello. <laughs> hi, thank you for, for, for uh, joining me to this stream. Uh, to uh, thanks interview. for having me. Uh, so... We already started to talk previously uh, while we like setting everything, but uh, I think we can just jump in now. So I, I just want to ask you, like, for, for starters, like your personal story, uh, how you start developing game, and maybe you can then talk a little bit about your team. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, so yeah, I probably have to go back in time. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, um, uh initially i wanted to uh work on a game um and mm -hmm. i was working on a game um it's a different different type of game than what ended up ended up being mm -hmm. um with a friend and that kind of fell through as things do um and i thought you know what the internet's a big place let me go online and see if i can team up with a bunch of strangers from across the world um and so i went to a website called i think it's called indie team up um mm -hmm. but it's but it's actually, I think, being removed. It's no longer around uh -huh. where you can kind of collaborate with um, a bunch of uh, developers and people who want to just collaborate together to create something. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, um, I pitched this idea of a stealth kind of game, um, kind of like similar to like Thief or Splinter Cell, but from an isometric point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and what I did was that a lot of people on that website were just posting ideas. Um, what I did was um, I actually created a concept piece Mm -hmm. spent some money and created like a concept piece of what I wanted the game to kind of look like in its early stages. Mm -hmm. um, and I started started to attract a few people. Um, and so um, I got a few people who um, jumped on the project. Um, uh, not every role was filled, but enough was filled. And so um, what ended up happening is that, you know, I got a you know programmer, a level designer, a concept artist, um, and then I paid for animations and paid for a few other things. Mm -hmm. um so anyway um eventually what had happened is that um the the programmer kind of fell through he couldn't um you know uh be obligated to the project mm -hmm. um so i reached out to this guy called um lucas who i actually reached out before to just get some systems done in the game for us paid um and uh, i'm like you know do you want to help us out with this project and um you know, uh, I'll see what I can do financially, but also you're going to get a percentage of the game and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of started off from there. And the goal was essentially to um, try and get who we can on the project um, and any other aspects outside the project, um, I'll try and pay for, mainly animations and that sort of stuff and 3D art. Mm -hmm. um, and then what ended up happening is that we decided to focus on creating a prototype of the, of the game. And at that time, there was something called the Unreal Grant. So if you build your game on Unreal, you can actually apply for a grant. And, you know, hopefully if your project's, you know, got potential, mm -hmm. um, they will uh, give you some money, you know. Oh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we spent a good amount of time developing this prototype that, you know, if you looked at it now, it's really bad, very sketchy, you know, but the idea is hopefully it's good enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I wrote a game design doc and a proposal and all that kind of stuff. And at the same time, I was also, um, you know, reaching out to publishers and I spoke to a few publishers, but the issue is asking for funding for a project on, you know, a game that, you know, you've never made a game before is really hard to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so anyway, in the meantime, apply for the grant. 
Um, heard nothing back, you know, on the Unreal website. They said that they're going to get back to it within a month. Heard nothing for like six months. And I'm like, oh, maybe it wasn't good enough. Anyway, got an email from, from Unreal and said, hey, you're one of the winners of the recipient um, grant. Um, uh, you're going to, you know, be part of the, you know, rounds, right? So, you know, you've won some money, you know, so you can get yourself started. Lottery, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Um, so after I, the team won the Unreal Grant, um, uh, I had a bunch of publishers reaching out to me, um, and we had you know a discussion, and um, I was having a discussion with Blowfish Studios, which is the studio that we end up going with, mm-hmm. um, and you know they were you know they wanted to obviously you know publish and fund the project, and also they wanted to create a comic about it, and you know create uh, like animated cutscenes for it. Um, and, uh, we kind of went from there and, you know, um, the kind of, the, the, you know, how it is, the rest is history. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. we spent, you know, a good three years, um, developing, um, you know, winter ember to, you know, until release date. Um, and so that's kind of how it worked, um, from the very, very, you know, beginning. I know it's a long story mm-hmm. and of course oh. I'm missing a few detailed things, but you know, you don't want to get bored from the story. Yeah, That's kind of how it it's an interesting story. It's an interesting story, especially like I, I want to, to like question, to ask you a question, you not question, sorry, ask mm. you. Um, because we like, uh, Rustolandia, we're like our own publisher now. And uh, uh, I know many studios there, be, we contacted and have, I have a talk with, are like alone, you know, mm. we don't work with publishers, but like, how's your experience with publisher like? We don't have that experience of like, can you share something like? Um, well, the thing is, it depends on the publisher, right? Um, of course, yeah, but... So uh, from my experience, um, you know, working with Blowfish, um, overall, it's been a, a pretty good experience um, with them. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty transparent um, with what's going on mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and pretty flexible. Um, but I can't say that for all the other, um, you know, developers out there uh, mm-hmm. or publishers, publishers, I should say. Um, you might, the, I think the, the main issue or the main concern is when you're trying to get a publisher early on, um, it might be a bit of a hassle um, mm-hmm, trying mm-hmm. to get anyone to kind of listen to you. Because, um, you know, we're all dreamers, right? We're all working on a project and yeah. to get funding for a project is is hard because you're essentially saying, you know, trust in me, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But overall, it's it's been, you know, a, a good experience and it's been a, you know, a strong learning, you know, experience. Um, so yeah, like, I, I don't know. Cause I, I don't have a reference to a whole bunch of other publishers, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, besides the initial conversation. Um, so, so far it's been fine. So how, how much like your feeling is you getting support from publisher because like uh, other, like the, they like, uh, commit to publishing game and following things, uh, you have this relationship of supporting you, you know, your mm. project. Well, I think that Blowfish is a development studio as well. Mm-hmm, it's not just mm-hmm. purely a publishing studio. Um, so from a technical point of view, they are doing the porting. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and that's the thing. The one, one concern is that um, because they're doing the porting, uh, I don't know how the game is going to run on other consoles. Uh-huh. Um, we don't have a development kit on our end. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So literally the first time I got to play the PS4 version was mm-hmm. the day of release. Um, because I, I don't have access to actually, um, figure out what's happening with the port. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's, I guess that's the one concern, unless I wanted to get a development kit, um, mm-hmm. and do it that way. Um, but you know, most of the resources that I've got is going towards building the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. so, you know, there, there's that aspect. So you're um, like, uh, having like more power to, to, to creatively express and not concern yourself with some problems technical or similar um yeah so mm. our, our focus is mainly on pc um and then it's ported onto the other consoles mm. um so our focus was just purely on the pc mm-hmm. um now granted it would be good to actually be more involved with the console version mm-hmm. um but you know there, there, there are limitations in place unfortunately mm-hmm. well that's something uh, we don't touch yet mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah hear. Yeah, we're not not brave enough, or we don't just consider it that as option. Baby steps. Yeah, baby, baby steps. steps. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo, bravo. Yeah. So, can you like uh, like get on Winter Ember? 
Like, can you have some, like, share, what you can share with us about game, like, not to spoil it too much? Um, <laughs> um, so with Winter Amber, I, I guess the, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, a, a love letter to multiple games that I, I enjoyed growing up, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, Metal Gear Solid, Thief, um, Splinter Cell, that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, like even things like Batman, Batman, uh, I think is, is a good, um, Arkham series, a, a very good series. Um, mainly mm. cause Batman's just one aspect to it. Right. But Gotham city is an equal character. And then all the villains, yeah. Joker mm. is a classic character. The penguin is a classic character. Right. Mm. Um, mm. and so, you know, Batman is just not Batman. It's many things in one. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and to a certain extent, I wanted to try and make some of the characters in the game quite unique or interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe the villains could have been fleshed out a lot more in, in Winter Ember. Mm -hmm. um, but there's other characters, I think, um, like Francis Toussaint, which is this rich character that is a, plays a very, very important part in the story. Um, I think he's fleshed out pretty well. And then same with Gwyneth, the mourning mother. Um, mm -hmm. But Winter Ember actually has a lot of symbolism that you kind of have to play to kind of figure out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's kind of like just an amalgamation of many things. And one thing that I noticed is that the stealth genre is lacking. There isn't a lot of stealth games out there. No. Um, so, yeah, so I wanted to kind mm -hmm. of tackle it. And stealth gaming is, is so hard to tackle mainly because if you think about it, a stealth game is actually an action, it's, a, it's an action puzzle game. And what mm -hmm. I mean by puzzle mm -hmm. game, I don't mean actual puzzles like Portal. I mean more like you have to try and figure out how to get around um, certain obstacles without being mm -hmm. seen and using a tool set. Um, and so in a way, it's not a direct puzzle game, but it's an action puzzle in a way. And I think it's very, very hard to get right. I remember when um, I was uh, reading somewhere about first Metal Gear's uh, like game, or it was like from some Japanese computers. I'm not sure how they called. Mm. And the concern of the publisher or, or whoever was like, who will play the like the, the war game without like out run shooting and you know having <laughs> all those projectiles, you know. And I think uh, the 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 publishers maybe not publishers, but like. Uh, we are not still prepared to to catch that uh, concept of stealth game, you know? Because uh, now I'm listening mm. to you and thinking about there are so many games that have like stealth uh, stealth moments in the game, you know? But like there are really few games that are like really rec recognized as stealth games. Like Splinter Cell mm. is like really game when you play it with like sound, lightning, mm. you know? It have a really unique approach. You also have mm. like a, a commandos as a stealth game in a sense, you know, mm. where you have like a group of commandos that is also isometric and you need to mm. like be. So it's concept that's like every game may be for itself in some sense. Do, mm. do you believe in that? No, no, I do believe in that. I think well, one of the issues with stealth gaming is that it's a, it's a genre that oppresses the player. Um, so, mm -hmm. and to get it right is very hard. Like, what, what I mean by that is a shooter, you know, is a shooter. You go around shooting, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you might create amazing set pieces to kind of compensate for the fact that it's just a shooter, right? Mm -hmm. um, with stealth gaming, you have to literally oppress the player. Um, the issue is how do you balance it where it's fair? Mm -hmm. um, because what I mean by oppress is that you're literally trying to hide from the enemy. Um, mm -hmm. And you're trying to, you're, you're weak and vulnerable. But how do you do it without making it frustrating? And that's very, very hard to pull off. Because so I, I kind of see it more like a balancing act mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. to try and get right. Um, so you know you don't want to, of course, oppress the player. But if you don't oppress the player, you get games that like you get games where it's one thing, but it's got stealth elements. So for example, Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed has a very competent stealth aspect to it, right? But it's not really a stealth game. Um, and so yeah. it's mm -hmm. like. If you play on normal difficulty, you don't really have to go stealthy. You can just kill everyone, right? Granted, yeah. if you play on a harder difficulty, you want to be like, okay, it's a bit, a bit of a chore to fight enemies. So you I have remember to playing around. the first Assassin's Creed. It was like just kill some people and get out, like let them forget about you and return. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's so hard. It's very, very hard to kind of um, strike that balance without hurting the player. Mm -hmm. And I think um, games like Dark Souls, which is not a stealth genre, but um, they tow the line between a game because that they're, that's a very hard genre. Mm -hmm. They tow the line between making it unbelievably painful to play and glorious and enjoyable, and mm. they somehow got it right. It's very hard to do. 
And there's a whole bunch of other games that are in that genre that they don't get it right. Um, just Is because it, uh, about it's reward? an art. It's a reward, but um, you can get rewarded by games that are very overly hard and it might not be worth it because you're getting too pushed down. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where I think it's many mechanics in one to try and make it work where it balances it. It's, it's a very thin line. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard to kind of get right. It's harder than I think other genres. It's like you have oh, a some lot of uh, other genres. management of, 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 of uh, pros and cons. And if like, if you go too much on this side, you need to like uh, su subtract other side like uh, yeah yeah the the the, the dark souls uh, i'm really fan of it mm. uh it's mm. like really hard but reward is so high and like beating Very the high, game yeah. is a badge on all, of honor for itself mm. you know and it's not just like okay yeah. i wanna uh like share with people like i i beat it like you know and especially mm. if, if you see like in dark souls you can leave message I beat it, I beat mm, it, you know. Helps you but out. Yeah. No one knows who beat it. Who are you? But you're like mm -hmm. in some sub world, some world that's like between game and real world that mm. is it some ghosts of people they're like sharing their emotions of like mm. their badges mm. of honor. Which is very cool. Mm, it very is very cool. It is. It's mm. essentially saying that we're all together mm. and we're trying to get through this hellish game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a good mm. unifying kind of aspect. Mm. So Sa Simon, uh, 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 hello Simon and Anubia, they are like joining. Simon like hello. commenting, Dark Souls makes you work for the power of fantasy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it does. But mm. now that Dark Souls, once you get, there's a saying that which is the hardest Dark Souls game, right? And I'd say it's the first one that you play. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which one, it's the first one that you play because once you conquer one mm -hmm. yes another game could be harder but in your eyes you're actually better at the game yeah but um, actually and so you're actually become accustomed to it so you mm -hmm. die less like my perspective is that dark souls as you play gets harder but you die less mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you get mm -hmm. what i mean yeah it gets yeah. harder but it, you die less mm -hmm. and that's the rewarding aspect you can see a progression in your own ability yeah yeah you are like uh, much stronger and capable and, and you mm. learn the world. Uh, yeah, I actually have out. comment on like when Sekiro uh, and, uh, mm. uh, was published, you know, and it was like Dark Souls game, Souls-like game for Souls-like fans, but it was a different concept. So yes. I remember adapting to Sekiro as a Dark Souls player. Mm. It was like extremely yeah, hard. Same yeah, because the game like just turn everything around, you know. It's not more mm. like don't be there when like you're struck, struck, uh, mm. deflect things like that. You know, you need to Good be. Good luck with rolling. Yeah, yeah, no rolling, <laughs> <laughs> no rolling. Yeah. And I still play Sekiro and try to roll because it was so. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you have some. I reflex. had the same issue. Yeah. Yeah. Then I had the same issue. Sekiro took a long time for me to click because I kept on trying to roll. Um, I didn't realize, like, yes, rolling is a certain aspect to it and jumping is a certain aspect to it, but that's secondary to parrying and blocking. Yeah, exactly. Um, and no joke, it took such a long time. Once it clicked, I'm like, oh, my God, this is an, an amazing game. Yeah, um, it is. I, I had to unlearn what, what I learned in um, Dark Souls. Exactly, um, exactly. And that's not a bad thing. It, mm -hmm. it shows that From Software said, hey, look, we could have just made copies of, of the game, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. And all we did was literally, okay, there's a basis for it, which is the Dark Souls kind of formula, but we've flipped it on its head. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing um, with Bloodborne. Bloodborne was more offensive. So Dark Souls is more defensive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, Bloodborne, if you got hurt, you got a small period of time where you can slash back and the game was faster and mm -hmm. you couldn't block. And mm -hmm. so they did it again where they flipped it on its head. You, you couldn't just rely on blocking anymore. You had to actually rely on being agile and quick and uh, being, being more offensive. Um, so it's one of those things where you had to also rewire your brain. Yeah. You know? Mm. Especially if you're a veteran in, 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 in you know. Mm. Uh, yeah. Something and, yeah, that's right. Mm. You think you're, you're a king. Mm. And then as soon as you played Sekiro, you're like, I'm really crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Sekiro, is, as you said, like it was for me to like, really really long learn curve you know it was like yeah it was insane but i never give up like yeah. it was like i mm. can beat it and i beat it like and i remember like beating uh lady butterfly that was oh, like yeah. first like big boss for me mm. and i was like yeah. i was fighting her like for days <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have much time to play, but like I was fighting her for days, and literally when I beat her, like I was like 
almost stand up like give her honor like <laughs> it was yeah, like yeah. really good experience because i didn't yeah i wasn't frustrated mm. because I, i i i i learned and that's maybe the the key i learned that i always moving forward you know mm. and it's like in the movie with uh, tom cruise when he's like uh in the loop and he's like learning uh the 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 positions and behaviors of enemies you know mm. and uh, maybe that's the the key also to start genre like you learning to move mm. through this world mm. you learning so the, guess, the yeah. rules mm. that's a fair point because it, it, it kind of like relates to if you're learning a craft like if you're playing a, a you're like an acoustic guitar or drums or whatever right mm -hmm. um you suck in in the beginning but and you think how could i ever learn this song i just can't get it right mm -hmm. three days later you're smashing out the song mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it, it's probably a very similar experience because like i remember playing sakura like second and third time right like just after i finished it i wanted to play the game mm -hmm. and lady butterfly was way easier the second time yeah, yeah. way easier mm -hmm. you know it was like orchestrated uh, mm. uh fight like you know like a song like mm. you, you were like dancing with her like it was yeah yeah I know. yeah I that's right yeah mm -hmm. I agree with you. It's mm. more of a dance. Exactly. Well, the, yeah. the, they, they did something, I think, with the uh, rhythm there. I know for the fact that in Dark Souls 3, you have this motion mm. when the you beat the... You, when you fight the, 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 the bosses, they have, like, some mm. organized rhythm behind the music. So you, the music corresponds mm. to their movement. And they uh, just reaction. rip that off in some moment, you know? They yeah, yeah. just pull off rhythm and you're, like on square one in some sense and i think mm. they they invested a lot in the rhythm in Sekiro. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, something like that can be thing. extremely boring maybe if you don't hide mm. it well or or, yeah. or use it well so that's also something in the stealth games so you're mm. learning the rhythm of let's say movement of the enemy mm. and you need to learn that rhythm and play through that rhythm mm. uh yeah. is that challenging for you Like, do you recall this as as a thing in your in your in your example in the? Well, yeah. The the thing is, yeah, definitely with self games, it's all it's all about recognizing the patterns that occur around you. Mm -hmm. I think one of one of the challenges when it comes to stealth games is you've got to be patient. Um, so you got to be patient with like you know obviously games like Souls games, right? Mm -hmm. Um, where you can't just go in and hack and slash. You have to be patient and figure out the enemy's attacks. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's the same thing when it comes to stealth gaming as well. Um, you have to basically sit there, and I think we're being we've been conditioned where back in the day, slower games were fine. Um, you're happy to just endure the slow pacing. Mm -hmm. In in the current era, um, I, I guess gamers don't have the same kind of um attention mm -hmm. um and so they were so trying to get players to be patient and observe what's going on and mm -hmm. understand the patterns um it's definitely there and you need to have those patterns in place um but it's kind of one of the big hurdles of developing a stealth game in my opinion mm. yeah do you think uh, if you have some uh, problem with uh Like now we mentioned in Dark Souls and Sekiro, like changing a little bit of mechanic, like just speaking like in, uh, help me the, the Victorian one. <laughs> I, 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 Bloodborne. I was, yeah, in Bloodborne, you said like, you need to be more offensive, you know, more mm. aggressive. And that's like minor tweak in the, in the game, let's say. So how much mm. is it problematic for stealth game? if you have like these core mechanics and try to tweak them to be uh like playable for level design you know you know what I, what, I, what i'm aiming at you. yeah like, yeah how much you have no, problem I... with uh, uh tweaking uh core mechanics in the game for level design? well it depends well it depends on the the core mechanic um level mm -hmm. design is not too bad to be honest um it depends on the mechanic itself mm -hmm. um so if you know if you're going to talk about like combat that's a harder thing to kind of tweak it's a bigger thing to work on if you're talking about like how quickly a enemy can see you mm -hmm. um that's not too bad that's a variable it's it's mm -hmm. not too too bad the biggest challenge is that um you can play your own game and you can be efficient and an expert at your own game and that's a conundrum mm -hmm. um because to really understand how well your game actually functions 
you basically have to give it to a whole bunch of strangers, a whole bunch of people who are going to play it, right? And collectively, if there's an issue, you're going to get the same issue pop up from multiple people. Mm -hmm. And you need to then figure out how do you address some of these problems. Mm -hmm. You playing your own game, you're not going, you can fix the game to a certain point, but you might miss out on things because you, you know how the game functions. Yeah, yeah. And I so you're that's... very efficient mm -hmm. at executing whatever you need to execute in the game. Mm -hmm. You might not be, but other players, who might be the majority, might not understand that. And they might, you know, they might not be able to play the game how you thought would play out right. Mm. Um, and so, um, the biggest hurdle isn't so much tweaking core mechanics, though that can be an issue depending on the core mechanic. The biggest issue is getting enough feedback, um, from players that are common. Mm. Um, you know, mm. you can't, you can't cater to everyone's needs because sometimes that individual need might affect someone else's enjoyment of the game. Mm -hmm. Um, you need mm -hmm. to kind of see from a collective, oh, guess what? No one likes this function. All right, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. obvious. There's multiple people who are saying it. You're wrong. No matter how you think about it, you're actually wrong, and that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, and so the challenges are ultimately listening and trying to figure out and how and trying to figure out, okay, when someone says this is clunky, you need to figure out what is clunky about it. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. defining what the problem is is an issue. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like, for example, um, I'll give you an example. Right now in our game, if you go into cover, um, so there's a, there's a cover system, but the cover system doesn't latch on to the current version. Now the version that we have on Unreal Engine has a lock on system where it literally clamps on. So you have a crate, it will literally latch onto the four sides of the crate, depending on which angle you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So it's like an automated system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The current version doesn't have that. So you have to be more precise and you have to kind of aim the camera until the trace hits that crate. And that's not good. You need to make it automated. Yeah, it's too much um, hustle for players. It's too much. That's mm -hmm. right. You don't want the player to think. Mm -hmm. Very minimal mm -hmm. thinking because you mm -hmm. want to think about other things. Um, or, for example, if you're in cover and you're peeking out and you want to do a stealth kill from cover, sometimes it doesn't register because we realize that the trace is from the chest to the enemy and the chest gets sometimes blocked by the crate, for example, mm -hmm. that you're peeking out. So we have to actually move that trace to the head and maybe make the trace wider. So um, you can automatically attack the enemy from cover. Um, so it's kind of like very automatic. Um, but I can do it without worrying because I know how to play the game. But others, yeah. you know, they don't realize how to play the game because, duh, they don't know the mechanics. So you have to make it as, as streamlined as possible. Um, and so trying to define what people have issues with and actually get an appropriate explanation from it is the only way we can really identify how to fix it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. We're trying to reach people also to figure out what is the problem. Because we, we, we learned something like recently that uh, we have one mechanic in game when we are like, uh, you need to, uh, how to explain this? Uh, even I can explain. Uh, it's basically it's a really <laughs> simple mechanic, you know. So you need to put... Uh, some points of stealth uh, regarding of how many people you engage facets mm. uh, like cards we use in the game uh, so mm. like let's say you have you need two per person if you have two person one have three one hand one it's okay you know if both have two it's okay you know you need four basically but people seems don't understand that you know and mm. we don't know how to like we'll we'll figure out eventually we need to address mm. that, and because uh, while we're developing that, it was like really obvious to us, you know. It mm, was really logical. Yeah. Uh, mm. Okay. Yeah. The Simon is commenting now. Simon is actually our, our owner. So in in the in the chat, like I find that players don't understand the solution, but they understand the problem. Yeah. Yeah. However, yes. they give the solution. Uh, mm. Yeah. That's yeah. that's I I feel with you. Like the the moment yeah. when you need to decipher what. Uh, player C, and what mm. is the actual problem that caused that? What they yeah, see. that's yeah. that's a fair point. Mm. Mm. Like um, like uh, I was speaking to um my my programmer um, you, you so the thing is you want a game that like me personally I I want a game where there's guidance, but with a bit of thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and what I mean by that is, for example, let's just say that instead of having a, a waypoint, 
like let's say that there's a door and you need to unlock the door and the key is in a bookshelf right mm -hmm. you don't for me i don't want to have um a waypoint that's directed at the key itself because mm -hmm. it defeats the point right yeah. um it's a locked door um i would rather have on the radar and it's an area where within that area you've got to find the key right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um now one thing you'd be I, I think you begin to realize um when you're dealing with um you know uh, uh, gamers um and it's not a bad thing it's just how we are right um, you kind of understand why Ubisoft makes everything extremely streamlined mm -hmm. um, and copy and paste it because um, they probably get a lot of people saying, I don't get how to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. with, with Ubisoft games like Assassin's Creed, it's, they are literally telling you you're on rails without you knowing. Mm -hmm. Like you have to go there. You got to pick up this key. You got to open the door, right? It's mm -hmm. literally telling you what to do. Um, and so, so you're actually not really playing the game. You're on rails in a way. Um, I think a game like Witcher 3 probably does it one of the best. It's a good combination of both mm -hmm. um, where it makes you think. But the issue is if you try and you have the, the biggest challenge is you need to try and figure out how to make the game. You want to be rewarded for using your brain, but you don't want to use your brain too much. Yeah. I understand. Other, otherwise, mm -hmm. it becomes frustrating. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that we kind of struggled with. Um, and so we had to kind of rein it in, and I don't think we've gotten it to its perfection yet. Um, but I, I think what, um, sorry, who, who's the owner again? Um, Sim, how do you pronounce it? Uh, Simon, call him Simon. Yeah. Simon, call Simon. Simon. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah he's, exactly. He's it. commenting again, um, yeah, the player needs to feel yeah, smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, yeah. But they don't want to feel, the thing is, if you just give them everything, they're going to complain about it because it's like Ubisoft, right? People complain about it being... It makes them feel dumb. It's on rails. But at yeah. the same time, if you make it too loose, um, I'm confused. I'm frustrated. It's for once again, it's a balance, and it's so hard to actually get that balance. You know, like for example, That's... in our game, um, we've got this. A lot of the time, it's an area of effect, or like mm -hmm. an area where you've got to figure out what to do in that area. It's it's a circle on the map. But at the same time, we actually have an arrow that, if it's up above you, it's going to point up on the map or point down mm -hmm. to tell you if it's up or down. Now, a lot of players actually don't recognize the up symbol or the mm -hmm. down symbol. They mm -hmm. think it's just in that area. And mm -hmm. so how do you explain that without making a tutorial that's up and down? Maybe we need to do that. It's one of those things where, um, and you might even completely forget about making the tutorial about it because it's just on the mini map. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's so hard. It's so hard to try and get it right and remember to, you know, maybe we need to implement some kind of tutorial to tell the player to go up and down. You know, it, yeah, we have the issues I mean? with tutorials. Yeah, mm. it's it's hard to make tutorial. You know, because yeah, it's like you make separate game, mm. parallel game, and also we made some really fast solution tutorial when we are needed, and it didn't good mm. uh, did a great job there. Uh, mm. But we also feel like we we don't want to make tutorial. You know. And that yeah. maybe have be the, 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 the thing that we are player that don't use tutorials, you know. But now yeah, when some you... people don't read the tutorial, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're mentioning like uh, like this straightforwardness in like showing you with Assassin's Creed and we also know there are games that are like ultra uh, uh cryptic, you know. You don't know anything. Like like remember old games, like you need to mm wait for some review in the newspaper or someone to tell you yes. like what to do or some like random shit mm. like in, in in the scene like to 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 progress you know mm. uh, but i feel some games have like a uh, pass for being uh, difficult in that matter you know mm. Mm. and is well, that about it, it marking depends. because you Sorry, you know uh, dark souls we we talking about it them you can beat the game mm. without knowing all of, about the game. You know, it's mm. just much harder because you can figure out if I get this item, I can beat this boss and area much faster. And, you know, mm. that's... But even if you don't have it, you can still beat it. You know, it's not an yes. obstacle you can't pass in any sense, mm. you know. Uh, but uh, some games don't have that, uh, how you say, that advance to that freedom to do that, you know, yeah. because is that is the thing about marketing or anything else? What's your thoughts like? Because some people can pass that, some don't. 
Dark Souls is an interesting one because Dark Souls, if you really bring it down to what it is, it's not about collecting keys and, and that kind of stuff, right? It's all combat. It's all combat. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. it is is that it's um, it's corridors, right? Mm -hmm. If you think about what um, Dark Souls is, you can't really get – it's hard to get lost in Dark Souls. It's interconnected, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but Dark Souls is just one corridor that you keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you don't need to think about – um, you know, puzzles and all that kind of stuff. Some parts to it, but yeah. Mm. Um, so with Dark Souls, I think you can't compare Dark Souls to other games because mm. it's literally just corridors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Resident Evil 7 and the remake number 2 and 8, mm -hmm. um, they do this interesting thing. And this is what also Elden Ring does as well, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, every, if you look on, I don't know if you played Resident Evil 7 or uh, 8 no. or no. 2. Yes. No? Um, yeah. Sorry, what was that? Yes, yes, I played two. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. So, with two, and I'm talking about the new one, right? Oh, no new. <laughs> no, okay, no, no. yeah. So, no, no. so, if you look at the new one, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you go into the map, basically, um, it kind of tells you which room you've been to and which room you haven't been to. Mm -hmm. And okay. which room is locked and which room isn't locked. Mm -hmm. And the concept is you need to kind of go to the areas that, that, aren't op uh, that you haven't been to. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. it really is. And if you played Elden Ring, it's actually the same concept. So Elden Ring has so much content that it's okay to miss out on content, right? which is an amazing thing. That means it's purely exploration. Mm -hmm. Now, what do most people do with Elden Ring? Um, they, look at, they, they look on the map and go, what's over here? Mm -hmm. And they literally mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so that works for um, games like um, Elden Ring, which is literally just combat base. Um, you go to a, a building and you go, I wonder what's happening with this building. Mm -hmm. And you find a way in. Oh, it's a dungeon, right? Um, but that's a unique kind of example. Um, the typical game out there is like the Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, very mm. mainstream kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I think the, the, the game that probably does it pretty well is probably Witcher, two, uh, Witcher 3. Mm -hmm. um, because you have to go to an area, it's an area, and you've got to find footprints. And you find it leads up to a body. And you find, mm -hmm. oh, it's being killed by some kind of thing. The claw marks on that body is because of some raven. Oh, mm -hmm. guess what? There's probably a raven nearby protecting its children. Mm -hmm. And so they build up this massive story around just literally investigating the environment. And like Garrett, which is the main character, clues, is yeah. narrating it. You mm -hmm. know? Um, I, I think... Uh, sorry, uh, what was the, the question again? <laughs> I went on a tangent. Oh, me too. Like, <laughs> you know, no, no, but like uh, how some uh, pull it off, like some to be different. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And, and cryptic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think Witcher probably does it. And once again, it depends on the game. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I don't want that in Elden Ring, um, mm -hmm. but I probably want that in a Ubisoft game. You mm -hmm. hear what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That kind of world building that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. I remember playing the old uh, Dark Souls, uh, Dark Souls, uh, Resident Evil games. So I played up to, up to, uh, part six, you know, and mm. then I stopped. Yeah, yeah. Seven, and I didn't play remakes. Uh, yeah, you got. You but got they scared. have this constant <laughs> like uh, back and forth thing, like find this key to open this room. You mm. find something, and you're like, what that can be? But they mm. weren't so difficult, you know. I remember being difficult yeah, when yeah. I was a kid because I, I, I couldn't speak English, you know. <laughs> and, mm. and, and no English so we were like just going around and trying to figure out but even then we could figure out the game you know we mm. missed probably a lot of uh, story and narrative but we still could play the game and, yeah, well I uh, think it goes back to the the map design because the, the maps are actually quite small which is good mm -hmm. for that type of game and like, like I said you have to just try and um, f find the area that you, ha you haven't been to and then you see like, oh, this door's locked and has a red mm. symbol because you yeah, can't actually yeah. go in. Mm, and mm. then, you know, okay, you've got to get some kind of mm. thing to unlock that door. So there's always something in the back of your mind that you need to um, go to empty spaces and fill them up mm. or explore mm. those areas. Mm. Um, but that works for that very self-contained environment. Um, it depends what you're making. If you're going to be making a, an open world game, um, that's a different kind of story. If it's going to be self-contained, that's a different kind of story. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know in your game how it functions. Um, from what I can see, it's kind of like, um, it, it's kind of like a, is it like a, you, you know, the choose your adventure kind of stuff? Is that is that how it works? Uh, not quietly. And that's something we also need to translate to the player, you know, because it's not uh, literal like you choose your, like, um, you choose this or that response or, you know, 
uh, and you have outcome. The thing with our game is what we're trying to do is like uh, playing different style, you know, meaning different style. Uh, uh, your choice ultimately have different outcomes and consequences, you know. And with those outcomes, um, so how does it work? Is it like if you fight an enemy in a certain way, it's going to have a different... So uh, um, let's say like this, uh, having too much fights, like bruise your, your characters, you know, and they became broken. So they have like, became more sloppy or, you know, they have like, they're losing their benefits. Mm -hmm. Uh so basically we the, the difficult of the game is not like you upgrading something we have some upgrade now but like it's basically you need to like uh, the condition of the character is worse and worse you know also you you enter the areas let's say chapters you know and you can have two difficult uh, two diffi uh, different approaches to exit to the next area you know and one can be like okay i want to make friends with some groups so they can help me or I want to fight my way through, you know. So basically that's your choice. Your play style mm. is your choice, you know. And mm. for now, like the, the current st state of the game, it's linear, you know, doesn't make mm. many. It's it's just core mechanic, how this mm -hmm. like middle loop functioning. But basically yeah, we yeah. want to build game upon like the the state of the characters and how you choose to use them, you know. Do you want to be them to be more aggressive, diplomatic, you know, stealthy, yeah. things like yeah. that? So it's not mm. Which obvious. works with that kind of game. What? Mm. Oh, it works very well with that type of game. Uh, uh, we hope. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> we, we still need some things. We have mechanics, you know, but we yeah. need to pull now the narrative and the present to, to, to people what's actually happening, you know? Because. Okay. Mm. Go ahead. Yeah. We want uh, to make something that, uh, in the long run, you you see the consequences. You know, the, the 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 characters are speaking more bitter or more. You know, you know. So oh, cool. it, it's different thing. It's maybe heavy to pull off, but uh, we believe in this. You know, so we're trying to you know present it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, that's interesting. So, can I ask how many people are in your team? Currently, three. Three. Okay. Cool. Cool. Mm. And do you know um, what? How long are you gonna take developing it, or do you want to develop like a prototype to go to a publisher, or uh, uh, like we, what, what's we your are the, the publisher and game plan? Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, we hope like in in month or two we can we can finish it because we basically finished the mechanics. It's just like bone or like meat on bones now. You know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they just pl place it on top. It's also like. I had a talk with multiple developers and non-developers. When you present mm. someone concept of the game, you know, mm. uh, some people can see it, you know, can mm. see it through the like, okay, this is not finished product, but I see mm. the idea, you know. But some people, yeah, and yeah. that's usually the player <laughs> on our like <laughs> help, yes. uh, can't see beyond. You yeah, know? they see what yeah. they are presented with. And some people mm. are, even though you present them idea like this is in development, they can't see mm. further and realize yeah. like what's missing, you know. You got to see the potential. Exactly, exactly. Mm. But we are hopefully yeah. now in stage when we don't show potential anymore. Now we're going to sh share, show more, much more. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And and what what engine are you running on? Uh, Unity. Mm. Unity, yeah. okay, cool. But, but basically, I was about to say, if it's Unreal, you... Get, get the um, Unreal Grand, but yeah, it's yeah, all good. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it was like, we started Unity prototyping and mm. it was like kind of like Unity Yeah, thing. same here. But now we, we basically, our level design it's with property files. Mm. You know? We, we can like uh, design levels and games, chapters with text files, property files. Mm -hmm. And we run yeah, like, yeah. yeah, we parse them and, you know, put content from them, you know? Only thing we need uh, Unity is now like, basically build a scene for presentation and store the the pictures the the graphics you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so we have yeah, that it, working yeah yeah well, yeah well I was, I was about to say if um and i don't like it doesn't matter which engine you use of course mm -hmm. um because I was, I was about to say if it was on unreal you could go for the unreal grant mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you probably have you know like i said potential to um get that um mm -hmm. but yeah 
you know, you're using Unity. We, we are really uh, modding time. friendly, the game, you know? So what was that? We are really modding friendly, our game. Yeah, yeah. It's really easy mm. to mod. Yeah, yeah. Actually, like, you can, like, probably figure out in, in day two, like, how to mod it. Mm, all right, okay, that's good. Uh, but yeah, that's but really we good. were like, uh, if someone wants to play our content, he will play, and he will want to play more with it, why, like, why don't allow people to have their fun, you know? I can also say that you, you're successful on Kickstarter as well. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, well, it that's wasn't tough. that big that's campaign, really but yeah, thank you. It, it was successful, yeah. Mm. Mm. It was nice. Um, yeah, because I, like, I know a few people who have done Kickstarter and... Um, uh, you know, they, they weren't successful, unfortunately, for whatever reason it, it is. Well, it's, um, so it's, it's actually uh, good to see that um, there is some kind of traction. You can get some kind of support from it. Well, the thing is, we pull off successful Kickstarter campaign, but it's not that successful, you know, because we put the, the low goal, you know. And the thing we believe now in the... Yeah, it's really hard, yeah, same thing. And we believe that to pull Kickstarter, you need already to have some community to, you know, to bring into the Kickstarter campaign, you know, mm. building community mm. on Kickstarter, it's, it's virtually impossible. That's what I believe, you know, if you have something yeah, and to I... bring it, people from, you know, whenever you collect them, it's something mm. you, that can potentially grow, but Kickstarter to pull Kickstarter off is like really insane, you know. Especially now, uh, I think it wasn't too bad back in the day, um, mm. but I think people have kind of, they're a bit more skeptical about, about you know, Kickstarter. Mm. Um, and it seems like a lot of the Kickstarters that are very successful, that have like a lot of funding behind them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a feeling that it's not just them, you know, just jumping on Kickstarter. I think they actually have some kind of publishing or something that's mm. helping them fund the Kickstarter itself as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, getting, um, you know, getting the, like a campaign running for it and, ha mm. and having ads for it and that kind of stuff. Um, so I think it's 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 a little bit different to what it used to be back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's like with the 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 the, the industries like that, like Amy uh, gravitate towards that, you know, to to give money for for uh, campaigns, for you know, curating. Everything is like you know, you want me to review your game, like give me some money, I will review it, you know. Uh, you mm -hmm. want like some followers we can have some ghost followers you know things like that we're gonna yeah yeah dozens that's of right. people. so everything is around like uh, uh, as a similar saying like uh trying to 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 trick the the algorithms and you know yes yeah and i think if you aim for for the quality that's at least like the the, the idea of our company mm. Mm. if you yeah, deliver quality, quality product you okay. don't need to care much about you know maybe mm. it's that too dreamy or whatever but like i think that's the right uh, mindset to to work with but like um the mindset that i like was um you know uh like people don't fail because they aim to high and miss they fail because they aim to low and hit right mm -hmm. um and what i mean what i mean by that is um let's just say that you've got a certain style that you wanted to convey right make a game that looks a certain way um, it's better to aim for, for example, you know, Ori, the, the game Ori? Yeah, Ori in the, in the Blind, Blind Forest. Forest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's better, even though you can't ever hit that level, it might be a small studio, budget restrictions, mm -hmm. you should still aim for that level, because even if it's not at that level, it will be at a higher level because you tried. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can really, you know, ultimately do. Mm. But also, I see many developers... Um get in trap of uh, over oh, they overwhelm them themselves you know they give yes, too yeah. much yeah. on they you need, really need to know how much you can deliver because either you will finish on like endless development i know we have yeah. a problem in the beginning like we were too much uh, innovating you know mm -hmm. and it was really hard painfully hard for us to stop mm -hmm. be so innovating you know and we were like, mm, you know, because mm. we can just go on and on. We mm. can like, see, I, I feel still like we as a team can s sit down and innovate like billion ideas, <laughs> like just go forward, you know? Yeah. But you can't make product like that, you know? You need to yeah, stop right. and make something, you know? So that's It'll also... It'll be development hell. Yeah. You also need to know like what your limits, you know?
current limits and they're usually like uh, basic limits like how much time i have funds people you know because ultimately with game development and and that's something uh most developers i think don't believe in itself is uh you can basically make whatever you imagine it's like it's not like i'm gonna make it like literally like i imagine but you're gonna be close enough you know i don't make I, I want to make this feature you can make it you know there is no yeah. especially today with all these uh engines we're using like unreal uh unity mm. engine you can basically make whatever you like you know mm. there's no like much mm. limitation it's not like the aaa quality maybe mm. but you don't have that money but mm. you can still deliver some idea you know it's mm. basically again like a piece of paper and a pencil you know if you're a writer mm. you can write whatever you want mm. uh, yeah fair point yeah so so i think that's that's the stage of the game you just need to know like uh, are you gonna make too much you know without mm. foundation you know what mm. i mean like i'm gonna make the, the 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 roof of this house but i don't have foundation you know so mm. you need to to know your limits and know what you're gonna build as mm. as an yeah. product it's, it's uh I, I heard from some guy who is like uh how you call the guys who it's a scenarist you know, scenarios for the the place usually and he uh, said what like, was that sorry for the theater place scenarist like oh yeah yeah, making, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, making writing the the, mm. the place and he said like you always need to know what's happening like from uh beginning to the end and maybe i think that's the good thing to to have on mind you know mm. i know how this gonna end probably <laughs> because uh <laughs> if you don't have like uh end in your mind you're mm. never gonna end <laughs> oh yeah, just yeah. Gonna no, but it's continue. a balance right yeah, yeah. Uh, like a newbie is like uh <laughs> commenting now most of time if you want to find you know what the games you have to watch at indie game yeah a yeah, looking um, for have success at most time yeah well, yeah, because well, the thing is, is that um, if you're an indie person, you can experiment a little bit more with mm. interesting ideas. Um, triple A's, it, there's so much money involved um, that if it doesn't go right, you can be really hurt by it. Even if the if the game does well, it's not about just the game does well. Like for example, um, if you have a game that costs fifty million dollars to make, right, mm -hmm. um, and you get back sixty million, that's not worth it, mm -hmm, right? It's mm -hmm. only ten million that you got back. You need to actually make sure that you've got enough funding for the next game as well. So let's just say the next game is going to cost seventy-five million, right? Because mm -hmm. it usually goes up the budget, right? Or even a hundred, uh, you know, million. So you have to actually think about if a game makes out of fifty million a hundred million, right? That's actually kind of a failure in the eyes of um, a publisher. Not a, not me or you. We're happy with that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they need to have enough money to make the sequel mm. and also at the same time um they could have put that money in a different game that would have brought them mm. back 400 million mm. so it's a different it's a different kind of sense hence why AAA games probably spend less time with experimentation there are outliers of course mm -hmm. um but at the same time they're not they're not willing to kind of take it that direction um just because they need to make sure they don't like i'm happy to get back double cool right mm -hmm. you're probably mm -hmm. the same um as a developer when they could have put that money in somewhere else um getting back double is not good enough yeah you know mm -hmm. that, that's the i think that's one of the main reasons why mm. yeah, it's like uh, i remember hearing from the guys from the black keys talking about music industry it's more or less the same thing you know so you're like depending from people who like if they don't see something that's already successful, they ain't gonna ma make it, you know? And it's cheaper for them to pay for production and show it than like uh, put more money for like publishing, you know? Well, it's it's not only like that. I think um, quality, like, so the, the thing is you can innovate, mm -hmm. but the innovation is a rare experience. Hence why there's game defining 
games, right? Like, like when you think of the classic best games of the best, you can't rank the best games ever, right? No. Um, it's almost impossible. But you can have a category of classics. You've got Zelda, you've got Final Fantasy VII, you've mm -hmm. got Metal Gear Solid, you've got Halo even, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're anomalies. And when they come out, everyone else follows. Mm -hmm. And they follow that formula, you know, over and over again because that risk to make something new, it's... It's not just you can risk and not make it because it's not good enough to actually make something new and it's great is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see a lot of um, new games that come out that are um, masterpieces. Mm -hmm. Elden Ring might be the latest one, um, Which but one? That, that, come, that type of game comes out every 10 years, mm -hmm. you know? What's the latest one? I didn't get it. Uh, possibly Elden Ring. But that's oh. Elden Ring is a formulation of many other games up to mm -hmm. that point. Um, well, it's like, combination I mean, of like the game experience defining, of like, yeah. um, like Halo is one. Halo is a game defining mm -hmm. genre, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone after you know after Halo came out, um, the the um, uh, what's called it being able to shoot and mm -hmm. do first person on a console mm -hmm. wasn't around before Halo, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, mm. And same thing with the shield, um, having that health regeneration shield as mm. well, right? Mm. Um, that's a game-defining, um, you know, thing that, that, that occurred, and that's very, very rare. Um, that's lightning in a bottle, and that's almost impossible to have. Mm. And to do it again, um, it's, it's unbelievably risky. In the, in the world, like, that can be, let's say, Limbo, that was, like, really a genre that was copied so much. Yeah. Like Five Nights at Freddy's, like games like mm -hmm. that, they're like not big as Halo, as Half Life, you mm -hmm. know? But they were also yeah. like, as you say, defining. Gender games. defining, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the Limbo was but... like so popular, like it was like just blew, blew mm -hmm. up, you know? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, I think our, our terminology of AAA, AAA used to be that it's a must have game. Mm -hmm. AAA now means. How expensive the game is, yeah, yeah. quality wise. Um, oh, so, so our, our our references have has actually modified and changed over the years. So Limbo, if you think about it, should be a triple A game, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's not. We associate triple A games with budget. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're probably yeah. right. And, okay, and we like have said, to good innovate news. and be good at innovating is almost impossible. Because yeah. there's, there's plenty of good mm -hmm. ideas, but executing the idea. Um, and executing it right is so hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm. Okay, sorry to interrupt, like, but we have good news. Like, Simon is like uh, yelling here. Now, new speech mechanic is implemented in the back end. So, yeah, in a few weeks, we have new stuff in the game. Oh, so you Probably got speech sooner. mechanics. So, you're going to have voice actors? No, no, we're going to have oh. like text <laughs> for start. But we didn't yeah. have that yet. Like we have some just narrative sent by the inspecting the objects, things like that, pictures. Ah, cool. But now we're gonna have interactive cool. players. Yeah, that was something that was like planned for some time, and now we're gonna we're gonna make it. Yeah, that's good. Very to hear, nice. Simon. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. done. That's happening. Oh. Is it happening right now? Like is someone like like right now working on the game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Simon is working on the game <laughs> and, and listening to us. I think that's what's happening. That's funny. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's we, good. We, we're usually doing like that. Yeah. Mm. It's always someone working on, you know. I know for, for mm. a fact, like, uh, we also heard about like Anubi Art is our artist, Emanuele. Yeah, and he's so, like, I know that, he's sorry? listening to our podcast and streams, and he's like working while listening. Like, we're doing that uh, all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. So big, big, uh, how you say big? Yeah, sure, listening and working. Yeah. Listening and working. You yeah, better work go. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and everybody as well. Um, <laughs> We need to 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 uh, to ensure honor that we are working constantly. So yeah. <laughs> this is I'm friends of one of your sound engineers. Oh yeah yeah Alessio, yeah yeah. Mm. He you know like Alessio is crazy. Um, <laughs> in a good way by the way. No, um, of it's like uh, I'll go. Hey Alessio, I need like two soundtracks for this level. And he'll come back with like five. <laughs> I'm like all right. <laughs> mm. I won't complain. 
but musicians why, are like that yeah he's, he's a very good musician mm. he's got like there's like he made like 49 soundtracks for the game or even more mm. you know you, you went you went crazy which is awesome mm. i remember i was working a little bit with music and was like composer myself and still like playing music and one my friend was like professional musician and they worked with some guy and he was like saxophonist and he was like he just needs to like play some tracks you know for backup mm. you know for back mm. back sounds and, and he like just stay there heard the song and he was like playing for two hours like he made like two hours of content for wow. them you know and they didn't know what to use like <laughs> <laughs> they needed like two of minutes course. of track and they they he made like he just st stood there take the saxophone and like just play for two hours like non-stop like no pro and they were like blown <laughs> like and he was like some some monster on the instrument like it was like insane and i know like the, 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 doing music is like that like you just continue you can't yeah, stop now music music is sick and then not because it, it, it sets the mood um i think it's the only universal art mm -hmm. and what i mean by that is um there's, there's only so only gamers like games right mm -hmm. um uh people who read novels not everyone reads reads a novel but every single person likes music yeah you know what i mean yeah. it's one of the very mm -hmm. very few arts that mm -hmm. basically is universal mm -hmm. it's sick yeah it is do you play an instrument guitar and uh harmonica guitar? yeah a little bit yeah. oh nice mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. Yeah, I play acoustic and, and bass. Not well, but like it's yeah, yeah, I'm next just to acoustic. Me, you know, yeah, hit a bunch yeah. of strings and hopefully makes a note. Well, <laughs> mm. mm. no. yeah, it's 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 nice skill to have. It helps when you're compiling code. Exactly. And you're just mm. sitting there. Mm. <laughs> well, might as well just jam out. I actually need to stop play harmonica because of my dog. Like she go nuts whenever oh, really? I play. She heard one tone and she's like storming to me and like start like howling and she's like shaking and it's like i'm like okay baby i don't want to disturb I you it. anymore I so it. i give up uh sometimes when she's not here uh, i just take but i even didn't play i didn't play guitar for a year almost like i didn't yeah. take guitar in my hands it's still at my brother's place for <laughs> no funny. reason but i just you know you need to to how you say you need to continue every day to you know, keep going at it yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah it's funny like um you say you got a harmonica right um mm. that's an instrument that you give to people with kids that you don't like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah, what you that, do yeah or drum yeah <laughs> yeah that too that too right yeah because it's easy to make something some noise like and you just like hit it also with harmonica mm. yeah Okay, we. Yeah. I think we should stop here. Uh, I'm. I, we, 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 we we broke time limit. We are more than hour here. Whoops. But this was a really nice talk. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was good. And I'm really grateful for you to like to to answering a call and and have this talk with me. Uh, I hope you have like really good pass with Winter Ember. And Thank you. I'll play as soon as I, I I, I get get it. Uh, so yeah, good. that was Rob from uh, Sky Machine Studios talking about his Winter Amber game, and hope you guys check it. I will definitely will. Yeah. Thank you for the talk. Awesome. No, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It was, it was a really good talk. Yeah, thank you.